Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Hugh Patrick, Director of the Center on Japanese Economy and Business at Columbia Business School. On behalf of the Center, I'm delighted to welcome you to today's special lecture with the Minister of Health, Labor and Welfare, Katsunobu Kato. Minister Kato is also Minister for Working Style Reform, Minister in Charge of the Abduction Issue, and Minister of State for the Abduction Issue for the Cabinet Office of the Government of Japan. Um, I'm sure, Mr. Kato, you have to be very strong to shoulder so many ministries. Uh, today's lecture will be moderated by Professor Takatoshi Ito, who is director of the program on public pensions and, so and sovereign firms, sovereign funds, and CJEB's associate director of research. He teaches at Columbia University School of International and Public Affairs, SIPA. He has had extensive experience both in Japan and the United States, and has held many distinguished academic and research appointments. Uh, Professor Ito was awarded the Japan National Medal with Purple Ribbon in June 11 for his outstanding academic achievements. I now turn this over to Professor Ito, who will introduce Minister Kato. Thank you, Hugh. Uh, let me introduce you to uh, today's uh, uh, speaker, uh, Katsunobu Kato. Minister Kato is currently Minister of Health, Labor, and Welfare, as well as a host of other positions, as Hugh mentioned. His past positions uh, include uh, Director of Health, Labor, and Welfare Division of the uh, Liberal Democratic Party, <coughs> Deputy Chief um, uh, Cabinet Secretary, and Minister for uh, Promoting Dynamic Engagement of All Citizens. Beginning in 2003, Minister Kato has had the honor of being elected to the House of Re Representatives six times. Before trans transitioning to a political career, uh, Mr. Kato worked for the um, uh, Japan's Minister of Finance for 16 years. He's a graduate of the Faculty of Economics at the University of Tokyo. After, after Minister Kato's lecture, we should have uh, plenty of time to um, active Q&A, and um, uh, Mr. Kato uh, uh, will entertain uh, your questions. So, Mr. Kato, uh, we look forward to your lecture. Please, uh, uh, upload, uh, podium is yours. Good morning, I'm Kato, everyone. I'm Kato, and at first I want to thank uh, Professor Weinstein and Professor Patrick and Ito. Uh, thank you for inviting me today. I'm glad to come to New York, the city famous for steaks. Yesterday, I enjoyed a T-bone steak. How now the Japanese wagyu, a marble meat, is well known in the United States. In Japan, the older we get, the more the, we prefer a lean meat, a particular an aged beef, to a marble meat. Marbled meat. Therefore, the American aged beef is getting popular in Japan. I was inspired by the ate it beef I ate yesterday. So today I'm going to talk about the Japanese aged society. <laughs> uh, last week, uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe won re-election to his third term as president of the Liberal Democratic Party. And thereby, it was decided that his administration will continue for three more years. Almost six years has passed since the Liberal Democratic Party becomes a governing party at the end of the 2012, and the Abe administration was launched. During that time, I have also run the government administration as the Deputy Chief Cabinet Secretary, Minister for the Promoting the Dynamic Engagement for All Citizens, and the Working Style Reform, as well as Minister of the Health, Labor, and Welfare. At first, we tackled find a way of way out of the deflation and promoted that abenomics strategy towards economic recovery. When we addressed our structural problems, such as declining the birth rate in aging and declining population, aiming at promoting the dynamic engagement of all citizens, 
working style for working style reform and the revolution in the human resources development and productivity. Today I would like to talk about the society which the Abe administration has aimed at and its effort with a focus on policies for social security and labor. Please let me start also by talking about what the economic and the social situation looked like when the Abe administration started six years ago and how we have coped with the challenges. When the Abe administration was launched, we are suffering through a prolonged deflation. Our economy was stagnated. Large companies transferred their factories abroad. Employment, including in small and medium-sized subcontractors, was down, and wages were faring in the vicious spiral. Our nominal GDP peaked in 1997, but was fall, followed by the financial crisis of 2008 when our GDP dropped below the 500 trillion yen, and the sluggish performance lasted over 15 years. By contrast, the economies of many other countries was grown three times, whereas the deflation in Japan was sustained. sustained it. Under such conditions, President Abe led the Liberal Democratic Party that was an opposition party at that time and won a national election to become the governing party, bearing the slogan, Japan is back. He promoted the vision to the rebuild a by vibrant society where everybody could regain their confidence and hope for the future. That was lost due to the prolonged stagnation and trying new things, and the plan was to link the t this type of the societal vision to intensive economic policy and the solid growth strategy. After the changes of the government, the Abe administration implemented the Abenomics strategy featuring the three arrows. The first arrow was the board monetary policy to shatter the deflationary mindset that had gripped the country. And we conducted quantitative easing with the inflation target of 2% and the Bank of Japan President Kuroda. The second arrow was the flexible fiscal spending that would help rekindle our stale economy. And we tried to create the demand mainly through the public work, works project subsidized by the second largest supplemental budget was 13.1 trillion yen. And the third hour, the con cornerstone of abenomics was a growth strategy meant to stimulate the private investment to enable private companies and individuals to bring out their strengths. We took measures such as relaxation of the re regulations the Japanese economy and employment sti stimulates has improved as a result of the first and second arrows in particular. I wanted to show you some data to illustrate that. The most important is economic growth. The, for the period from April to June 2018, we see that Japan's nominal GDP increased by 11.2%. 7% from 495 yen, a trillion yen in 2012 and reached 553 trillion yen, climbing to the record high levels. Perhaps even more amazing is the job market. Back in 2009, the unemployment rate, the red line, was over 5% in the aftermath of the economic crisis. Compared to the other countries, this may seem low, but it was the worst level in Japan. Since there, it has gradually improved, dipping below 2.5% in 2018. Now, Japan is the midst of the labor shortage. What's more, the jobs to applicants ratio, which indicated how many job offers exist for one ap applicant, Illustrated with the blue line, 
exceeded 1 to 1 only in six pre prefectures in 2012, but now it was exceeded 1 to 1 in all prefectures nationwide. nationwide. I've heard that in the prefecture that went over the 1 to 1 mark for the first time on its records, the governor celebrated with his staff. As with other countries, the number of the regular full-time employees is typically decreasing, while that of irregular and or part-time workers is increasing over recent years in Japan. The percentage of the non-regular employees has also grown from 26% uh, at the beginning of the this century to over 37%. However, we notice different trends as the number of the employees rose over road due to the economic recovery, the trend for the regular full-time employees reversed from downward to upwards starting in 2015. And the number of them is currently approaching the level of the 2007. And for the first time, the jobs to applicants ratio for the regular full-time employees also surpassed the one-to-one -one mark. Lastly, I'd like to mention employees' compensation and the wages. In Japan, the level of the wages are determined mainly among the large companies through the annual wage negotiation held in spring called Shunto. For the, first, for the last five years, the levels of the wage, including the annual wage hike, has increased over 2% every year. The index of employee con compensation, which visualizes what all employees are earning, grew by about 10% compared to the post-economic crisis year, the 2010. Also, the nominal wages per person has steadily increased in recent years. As for the minimum wage, we aimed at the nationwide weighted average of 1,000 yen, paying attention to the nominal GDP growth rate, looking at annual increase of about 3% as a target. In the meantime, the minimum wages has been increased by about 100 yen, and the hourly wage of the part-time workers rose by about 16.7%. While widening disparity has been recognized as a social problem in Japan, in disease, social disparities have not widened since the Abe administ administration was launched. Rather, the poverty rate of the children is somewhat shrinking. Moreover, the job market for new graduates from high school and college has improved dramatically. Under such conditions, the Abe administration's approval rating is higher among young people than among the older people, who had strongly backed the Liberal Democratic Party previously. I feel that the younger generation, who had experienced the prolonged stagnation, evaluated the present economic situation and improved employment conditions in particular very highly. Among companies, the level of the corporate earnings has greatly exceeded the, the level before the economic crisis, with new record heights being written every year. Thanks to strong corporate performance, tax revenue has also greatly risen. In 2018, Tax revenue increased by 24 trillion yen compared to the 2012, now reaching 102.5 trillion yen, the highest level ever. Although Japan is facing a budget deficit every year, the tax revenue brought by the economic strategy made it possible to expand the social security, such as parenting support and long-term care, which also support workers and create a positive cycle. Till now, we've looked at the date, 
that shows the results of the economic and other policies implemented by the Abe administration so far. However, this is just the first step to address the major challenges of Jap Japan's social structures, namely its aging and the dwindling population. Next, I'd like to talk about that. The Japanese population increased from about 70 million after World War II and reached 1,028 million in 2008 at its peak, then started decreasing. It is estimated that the population will be the 100 million by the middle of this century, four below the 60 million at the end of this century, and finally become zero in or after the year the 3000 if the trend continues unchanged. Also, there is a trend until now and into the future in which the percentage of the older pro population continues to increase, while the productive age population is from 15 to 64, and the younger population aged under 15 continue their decline both in terms of the number and the percent percentage. When you look at the Japan's population the pyramid, there are two groups circled with a solid red line. Upper one is the generation born from 1947 to 1949 after World War II, the so-called baby boomers who make up the big chunk of the country's population. Another major population group is the children of those baby boomers born from 1971 to 1974, lower one. What we call the baby boomers junior generation, and it's also a big chunk. When making a social security policies, such as measures for aging society, it's an important factor to consider as to when the too big chunk will reach old age. Now, if I may bring your attention to the this dotted overs, this group corresponds to the child, children of the baby boomers junior generation. The government expected a certain volume for that generation. However, as it turns out, their birth rate fizzled, uh, partly because of the so-called employment ice age among the new graduates during the recession following the collapse of the bubble economy. Since then, the declining the birth rate has been recognized as a social issue in Japan. The declining birth rate is a crucial problem when may, may undermine the dynamic of the society. Also, Young couple wishes for having the children have not changed. So we must tackle this problem to realize their wish. In Japan, where most children are born to the married couples, a growing number of people who don't get married, a shortage of good jobs, and surplus income among young people, plus the burden of the child rearings are regarded as a contributor to the declining birth rate. Our social security system has been centered mainly on the benefit for the elderly. But now we have investment, more resources for children and their parents to shut off the trend of the declining birth rate, thereby creating the system in which everybody in the country supports each other. So both the elderly and the young can rest assured. We call this the old generation social security framework and we'd be the pursue, pushing it forward. We plan to raise the consumption tax in the fall of the next year and to invest the revenue in free early childhood education and development of child care centers. The important thing toward reversing the declining the birth rate is creating an environment where young people can dream of the bright future. I talk about the declining birth rate, but there is another challenge. challenge. The aging population of Japan, 
the aging population is, in other words, increased joyful longe longevity. For example, the expectancy for Japanese male was 65 years old in the 1960s. But today, it exceeded 80 years old. This, is, this in itself is not a problem, but the success we achieved. And we Japanese should be proud of it. The challenge is how to make our social security and other system adapted to the these situations. I will mention this point later. As you can see on the left hand graph, the 65 and over population will grow until the year 2025, when the baby boomers generation reach age 75. This increasing trend will continue the until the year the 2040, where the baby boomer junior generation hits age 65, but its pace will slow down after 2025. What we needed to, to pay attention to here is that the productive age population will decline at an accelerated rate as the graph on the right illustrates. To overcome Japan's structure structural challenges, as well as to create a ro robust and long-living society, I believe these three efforts will play a crucial role. First, securing the sufficient workforce. Second, improving the productivity, productivity. And third, enabling the smooth labor turnover. In fact, during the six years, under the Abe administration, the productive age population has decreased by 4.5 million people. So it would seem only natural that the number of the workers also would also decrease by about 3.3 million people. However, in reality, it has increased by 4.2 million. What changes is the female workers have increased by 3 million people. And also, there is some overlap. Workers aged 60 and over have also increased by 2.6 million. Also during that time, the labor productivity per person hour has been rising. Besides, there are still many women and older people who want to work if conditions permit. When we look at the impact of the labor input on the potential growth rate, it has been a depressive factor of a long period as the productive aged population plateaued. However, it has turned into the boost factor since 2015. Under such conditions, the Abe administration has worked to realize a type of society where the young and old women and men, regardless of the disability or illness, can all be important participants through the dynamic engagement of all citizens. This is an overview of our plan to achieve the dynamic engagement of all citizens in order to secure the sufficient workforce while the productive age population trend downwards. It's most important to build an environment where the people with various circumstances, such as taking care of the, their children or elderly parents, can work without worry. To make this happen, the Abe administration is implementing measures to achieve the specific objective, such as a preferred bus rate of 1.8 and zero job termination due to the nursing care leave. Liberating tax revenue coming from the achievement of economics, we are in the process of developing the child care and long-term care facilities and improving the working conditions for caregivers in order to provide the necessary services for ch child care and long-term care. <coughs> in Japan, more than half of the women gave up the walking after the birth of the, their first child, and many people quit 
their jobs or when the family members started needing nursing care. We are building an environment where people can continue or being working even when they take care of their children or old parents by reinforcing the infrastructure for nurturing and nursing care. In addition, we are tackling working style reform to create the working environment where women, senior students, anybody embracing various special conditions will find it easy to work. There are two main problems with working in Japan, which had been pointed out, but not yet solved. First is the long working hours in which karoshi, our deaths by overwork can occur. Second is the inequality of the compensation among the regular and non-regular workers. There are these detailed women and elderly from participating in the labor market and other major cause of slumping labor productivity in Japan. To confront these issues, Prime Minister Abe chaired the new, newly established Working Cell Reform Realization Conference, attended by representatives of economic and labor communities. And in March of 2017, the Working Style Reform Execution Plan was drafted. This plan includes a variety of the reforms, including the improvement of the how non-regular workers are treated and the reduction of long working hours. We have completed the necessary legal changes in the last diet session and will continue implementing these reforms with a sense of the urgencies. Some people point out that the government has changed direction of its policy from a zero-sum reform aim at supporting the companies by controlling the labor cost to a person reform aiming to improve the labor participation rate and productivity through the enhancement of working conditions. I definitely agree with that. I will touch on the content of working style reform as a, a bit. First of all, it's about correcting the wrong working hours. As I mentioned earlier, the population of Japan doubled after war, and the companies were in a situation where they could use an excessive labor force unlimitedly. Also around 1990, about the time of the bubble, catchphrase like, can you fight 24 hours? And energize from 5 p.m. That was the future in commercial for energy boost, boosting drinks become popular. There was an atmosphere that company valued workers who worked until late at night. And that workers were also proud of their long work hours. Against backdrop of the such corporate cultures, the average annual labor hours of Japanese workers are longer than those of European countries and the percentage of those doing overtime is also higher than European countries. Concerning the long working hours is a major reform that fundamentally changes in the corporate culture and the lifestyle employee. Even companies that recognize the necessity of the correction but hadn't taken action have initiated various efforts towards the reduction of working hours before the implementation of the revised law due to the active encouragement by the government. Also, it is expected that those who have previously been unable to work as a regular full-time worker because of required overtime will be able to choose a career as a full-time worker and that the productivity will be improved because employees will be required to work efficiently within unlimited time. The second pillar of the work style perform, uh, reform is uh, equal pay for equal work. The wage level for non-degree part-time worker is 
about 20% lower than regular full-time employees in European countries, but it's about 40% lower in Japan. Also, we cannot simply comp compare the situation because job description differ by country. You can see there is a large wage gap between the Japanese non-regular workers and regular employees. The term equal pay for equal work as used here, I mean, <coughs> means to eliminate unreasonable difference in treatment between the regular and non-regular workers. The wage system should be decided by each country. And I'm not considering changing the lifetime employment system or the seniority-based wage system fundamentally. However, on this occasion, I hope that company will rethink their wage system, including for regular full-time workers, and make an effort towards appropriate evaluation, being able to choose a suitable working style with a sense of certification through the appropriate evaluation, will help to motive, uh, motivate workers and improve their productivity. In order to apply the structural reform to com combat the Japanese issues of aging society and declining the population, it's crucial that we get women and elderly people actively involved. Prime Minister Abe referred to the promotion of the women's participation in his United States speech and attracted attention. There was a feature in the approach from the pers perspective of economic policy. The employment rate for women during their productive years has risen enormously to 67.4%, despite the productive population declining overall. Thanks to an increase in the number of the women entering the workers workforce. Also in Japan, the M-shaped curve arising right side, rising from women, leaving their job due to the childbirth, has been considered pro problematic, but it has become less of the issue today. In order to not force women into choosing either the childcare or work, we have improved the child care leave system, introduced a short time work system, and expanded the child care services. In addition to these efforts, it's also necessary to encourage males to participate in child rearing and work, housework. And this requires the correction of long working hours. Moreover, in terms of a measure for dec declining birth rate, there is a date that shows the couples who are may help with the housework are more likely to have two or more kids. The employment rate for the elderly is on an increased trend, and the latest rate is 23%. The level of this rate is higher than in other countries when those aged around 60 years old were asked about their, in, their intentions for future employment, about 66% of them answered that they wanted to work beyond the age of 65. And about 30% of them answered that they wished to continue the working for as long as they are able, creating the, an environment where the elderly can continue the working in good health is important, not only for their, themselves, but also from the viewpoint of the economy and the suppression of the medical and long-term long care expenses. Participation by women and old people brings diversity and opens up new business opportunities. As Japan's society continues to age, we need to secure the workforce and improve the productivity in order to raise the potential growth rate 
towards achieving the sustainable growth. Also, labor productivity fluctuates due to factors such as foreign exchange rate. For example, a labor productivity per hour is one time five times higher in the United States, indicating that there is a much room for improvement in Japan. Some many I argue that rising labor productivi productivity can lead to a reduction in employment, but there is little such discussion in Japan with its lack of workforce, and the labor side also welcomes it. It's necessary to raise labor productivity and increase wages. Also, in order to raise labor productivity, it's important to promote technological innovation such as AI and ICT to improve the quality of the human capital. That's why the Abe administration actively dedicates itself to the revolution in the human resources development, including drastic expansion of recurrent education that enables people to learn at every age and to return to the workplace or change careers. While the economy was stagnant, investment in human resources such as training was cut as a part of, of cost reduction at the companies. In addition to encouraging the investment of the human resources in companies, the Abe administration proactively supports individuals who study at the university to realize their dreams aiming at the revolution in the productivity and the human resources development. As I mentioned earlier, to achieve the vigorous and longevity-based society, it's necessary to allow the smooth migration of labor. In Japan, many new graduates from university or high school have assumed a single-track career path as a general model. As a technological innovation pro progress at a furious speed, an industry that was prosperous until yesterday might become the declining industry tomorrow. Also, even for individuals, the circumstances surrounding them and their hopes and dreams can greatly change. We are aiming at a society where the individual can choose their own its lifestyle and working style, depending on their situation and the wishes. In other words, we are trying to change the career path from the single track into march track. If a flexible labor market and business practices that will not deter job changes are established, works will be an will be able to select their working style and careers. It will also lead to a nationwide improvement in, in, in productivity through the career changes and re-employment in high-value added industries. Lastly, in Japan, the, the existence of foreign workers is becoming more important both in terms of the industry, as well as maintaining a functional society. In fact, in recent years, the number of the foreign workers in Japan has increased rapidly, including highly skilled technical person, personnel and technical interns to reach about 1.3 million workers in 2017, nearly double over the past five years. Keeping in mind the serious workforce shortage being faced by small to mid-sized Japanese companies, the government has decided to establish a new state status for foreign nationals pro possessing the specialized skill and expertise. We envision actively accepting such talented foreign individuals in the years ahead. The shortage of workers coming at the time of economic recovery is a major opportunity for the Jap Japan to the advance these reforms while meeting its advantages such as employment stability and cooperative labor relations. 
Without missing the opportunities, we will realize a positive circle of growth and distribution through enhancement of income by expanding employment and improving productivity for an increase in consumption and investment while revamping our infrastructure for child rearing, the nursing support, and promoting the working style reforms. Next, I would like to talk about the how, the Abe how the Abe administration will cope with the advancement of aging. Because of increasing age and other factors, the cost of social security benefit, including the medical expenses, has been consistently rising, and the financial burden is also increasing. How to improve the efficiency and the expenditure and the suppress its increase, and how to share the increased burden are huge issues. While we needed to review the burden and expenditure of the social security system to maintain it in the future, the extension of the healthy lifespan is a keyword in overcoming the aging society. In this era of increased longevity, is it correct to assume that the 60 years old of 2040 will be the same as the 65 years old of today? I believe that extended life expectancy and the improved health will enable those who are 65 and over to be a stronger force in the job market. So we should not consider them as the elderly or those who need support from others. In fact, date shows the Japanese people ages 65 and more have physically rejuvenated by five years. Over the last 15 years, also the survey of those ages 60 and over revealed that now more than 30% of the subject consider the age of the 75 as a borderline for being called elderly. Let's say we change the defini definition of the elderly from those 65 and upward to those 75 and above. Notice how this will make the working population in 2040 roughly the same as it is now. To make this a reality, Japan is focusing on the healthy lifespan growth rate that surpasses the life expectancy growth rate of our people. It says that about 70% of the population is interested in their health, but we are trying to make them more aware and to eliminate the disparity in the healthy lifespan that exists between regions. There is a disparity in the healthy lifespan between regions. The longest healthy lifespan for males among the 47 prefectures is 73.2 years, whereas the shortest is 71 two years. When we divided the region into two groups, the longer or short, uh, we long or short healthy lifespans. There is a big gap in lifetime expensive per person from medical care. Among prefectures with long healthy lifespans, the average lifetime expense the average lifetime expense for medical care is 2.6 million yen, whereas it's 2.8 million yen among the prefectures with a short healthy lifespan. Also, as you can see, there is a negative correlation between the employment rate over 65 and the medical and long-term care expenses. The extension of the healthy Lifespan has a great average in that each person can keep living in good health and also lead to the suppression of the social security expense. If the elderly can work healthily, they can start it on the side of supporting other people 
increase, increasing the tax and insurance premium revenues. There are various prog progressive approaches to health promotion, such as a pro program for the diabetes prevention in several regions. The government should develop them to national efforts. In addition, in each insurer has people records of medical care, long-term care, and health checkups. Also, the, these records are disconnected now. We are trying to the, integrate them. This reform, called Data Health Reform, enables us to the conduct data analysis to promote individual health management and health prevention. As for employment of the elderly, companies are currently obligated to continue employment until the age of 65, if they wanted to work, to ensure that the elderly can continue the working longer. We need to work on ma maintaining the employment past 65 years of age. Moreover, it's necessary to reform the pension system to reflect the result of the continued employment to an increase the pension benefit. Thereby, the elderly will be able to redesign their lifestyle even in their old age. Let's talk about the Japan law in the world that is also aging. Today's many countries in the world are facing the ch challenge of an aging society. This slide shows the number of the years that have elapsed, elapsed from when the country's rate of aging increased 7% to when that feared doubled to 14%. For example, it took France 115 years and the United States 72 years. In other words, this represents the speed of aging for the country's population. So when we look at Japan, we see it took only 25 years. That incredible first. But when we look a few years into the future, Many Asian nations like Singapore, South Korea, and Vietnam, Vietnam are expected to age at an even more rapid pace than Japan. As I mentioned earlier, the important thing is to make our system, including a social sec security, adapt to the rapid aging. And to our last slide, you will note that Japan has the longest average life expectancy among these seven advanced nations. And that it also featuring the longest health span as well. Obviously, Japanese dietary habits and the building the national health care system on early stage have a positive impact. And we are challenging a further adaption to the rapid aging society. In an era of, of rapid aging that the world has never seen before. Japan is transforming itself from the country of advanced challenges to a country with advanced solutions. From here on, we would like to share the Japanese experience as a country with advanced solutions so that we can contribute to a longer and healthy life expectancy around the world. I hope that all of those in attendance here today we we'll continue to keep an eye on Japan. I keep an eye on Japan and how it will contribute to the world through its experiences in facing the challenges and developing solutions. Thank you.